You're going to drive your car. Okay. And I'm going to see if there might be a certain someone free. Do you mean Mr. Ben? I do mean Mr. Ben. (laughs) You want Ben Collins to drive? You do realise he's going to drive it probably harder than I will. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode 20 of the Auto Alex podcast. Can you believe it? 20 episodes. Yeah, I thought we would have got cancelled by now. I know. We've actually been quite consistent, which is saying something because uh, Taylor is a big part of this podcast and you are the least inconsistent person I know. What do you mean? What do you mean? I'm very consistent. Are you? You're consistently late. I'm consistent and persistent. Speaking of late, I was here before you today, so you can say nothing. Uh, mm -hmm. That's true. That is actually true. That is actually true. Uh, Right. Before we get into the podcast, a big hello to Dejan Zelko listening in his garage in Slovenia. Tim from Sweden listening while playing Gran Turismo. Connor Kelly, who wants to shout out his work wife, Adam, who's leaving for a job soon. Adam's the one I showed you in the email. Oh, okay. What did you say about Adam? It's quite nice. Yeah, you said you'd have that, and then mm. you ca- you continued. Okay, okay, let's okay, move on. Okay, sorry. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Stephen Hollingsworth listening to the podcast while walking the hills in the Clwydium Range, North Wales. Clwydium. 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 Clwydium Range, yeah. Mm. Why, why not? Why not? No, you, you got to add like a... <laughs> like that. Okay. Um, oh no, I've, I've not got his, his name here. Someone listening to the podcast while driving from Melbourne to Sydney and he said, P.S. Taylor is hot. Thanks. Ow. Thanks. Probably because you were, he thought you were in your unit when you oh, set fire funny. to it. How did I know that yeah, was coming? Yeah. Uh, we've got Michael Barker listening in his Arctic, Arctic, sorry, not Arctic, because that's, that, that's far away. Listening uh, in his Arctic. Driving for Royal Mail. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. We'll move on from Royal Mail. Uh, we've got Charlie and Jack, who are both six and ten years old. Hello, Charlie and Jack. We've got Victor renovating his granddad's house. And we've Rory's got Rory's mum, Jackie. Jackie. Hello, Sorry. Jackie. How are you? I was a bit Hi, early mom. there. <laughs> Hi, mum. How, how's it going? You're right, mum. How's you're it going? Right, you're right, mum. Why, why are we glossing over Royal Mail? Is this how I've missed out? Oh. Uh, Do you not remember what happened to a car for our presenter? Ah, oh, oh, yeah. Just it. <laughs> anyway, before we discuss what we've all been up to, Shed Fest announcement. We need to have like sound effects. Maybe like from twenty episode twenty onwards, we could have sound effects. Or maybe you can no, just. I think, up, I think I think we should just leave you to be the sound effects. Or, okay. <laughs> or maybe we could just set off your Porsche's alarm every like every time you get in it. Yeah, what was the uh, uh, the Jaguar? That alarm was going off quite a lot, wasn't it? Which we'll get mm. to in a minute. Uh, anyway, Shedfest is a celebration of shitboxes, high mileage heroes. Uh, we are going to be running Shedfest from Mallory Park on May the 4th. Be with you. Tickets are selling out very, very, very quickly. I'm not just saying that because we need ticket sales, but I think a third of the tickets have already gone. Oh. And we've still got over four months left, mm. which is absolutely mental. I still need to buy a ticket as well. You do need to buy a ticket. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you're not being let in. Uh, <laughs> we've also got a really, really exciting competition for you guys where you can get your car featured on the official 2024 Shedfest artwork. That's right. Your car featured on the official artwork. There are 12 empty car spots on the artwork. And to enter, all you need to do is head to autoalexshop.com, buy our last remaining 2023 Shedfest signed bundle, which includes the signed 2023 poster, 2023 sticker, and the Auto Alex fabric keyring. Then all you need to do is email us your order number and pictures of your car and why it should be featured on the official 2024 Shedfest artwork. And the email is events at autoalexcars.com. We will then pick 12 winners next week on the Auto Alex podcast, after which your cars will be featured on the 2024 official artwork, which I think is ex- so exciting. That's very I, exciting. I have realized a slight fault with this artwork. Oh, shit. What if one of them picks a lorry? Oh, shit. That's fine. We'll edit the lorry in. We just it. might have to make it really small. Or <laughs> it just takes all of the 12 spots and it will just be sideways. Oh, okay, yeah. But I mean, have a look at this artwork, guys. It it's really, really good. It, yeah. oh, oh, hello. You're, God, you're in sync, aren't yeah. you? So um, if you're listening with your ear holes, we've got uh, a, a nice shot of Phil in the foreground. We've got Big P. We've got Alfred. We've got the Porsche. We've got Barney. And we've got Miles. And then behind that are 12 spots. For your cars why, to go. Why are none of my cars in they, there? Uh, they they just all broke down on the way to the artwork centre. Great. Yeah. Can we maybe put some of mine in there? I'm thinking maybe we'll swap out Alfred, the uh, the 164, and we can... And we can 
chuck one of your and, cars in. Um, no, one one is enough. No, no, I think, and I think no, maybe no. Um, Barney as well because that really. Oh, really speaking of Barney, I've spoken to Reedish Motorsport. I spoke to them a couple of days ago, and I said, "How's progress?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, you know, we're just limping along slowly, slowly," which is what we agreed. And I said, "I want Barney finished and ready for Shedfest." 2024. There's not a chance it's going to be ready for Shedfest. Challenge accepted. I tell you what. Yeah. If you if that car is at Shedfest done, yeah. and I mean done, like painted, can I running choose, and can driving, I choose the prize. I will give you a crisp ten pounds. Oh no! Well, what's your prize going to be? Oh, it wasn't going to be money. What? Going to be something. Else. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! I'm sure we can figure something out. I, I do question you sometimes. Do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. S- speaking of Shedfest as well, yeah, isn't there another chance to win something else? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, what's a motive? Uh, the motive that has not been confirmed. Okay. However, if you do come to Shedfest, the chances are very, very, very high that we will be giving away a very, very fast wagon. Okay. Of the uh, Swedish persuasion. So we've got some videos coming up, and I thought it'd be a great idea to give a car away. So genuinely, uh, if you buy a ticket, you are automatically entered to also win a car. Which is crazy. What yes. car? And it's not a shit £500 car. This is like a £6,000 car. Even I don't know about this. No, that's because you have very loose lips. And they oh, sink oh, ships. Oh, they do sink <laughs> ships. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Excuse me, but Mr. Rory Mackay over there is the one that sinks ships because oh, he no, cannot you are, no. hold a secret. You are the biggest gossip that I know. He is. I do love a bit of gossip. He's you the are. worst. I do love. Oh. I, I'm great. He is rubbish. Yes, yes, that is true. He couldn't even keep a Christmas present a secret. He's almost as bad as Gareth. So, um, a few Valentine's days ago. I I told Gareth that I had bought uh, Rianne a showy helmet, like pink design and everything, so yeah. she could come on the back with me. And uh, they turned up to Valentine's Day because we spend a lot of times together. Not weird. And um, I gave her the box and Gareth said, oh, is this the helmet? And I was like, oh, <laughs> for fuck, she's I like Rianne, her, her little face dropped and I was like, it's a helmet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Nice one, Gareth. So I call that helmet gate, and I, I never let him forget that. Okay, <laughs> nice. Uh, but yeah, as a reminder, buy your tickets for Shedfest. Not only can you be entered to have your personal cars, your pride and joys, or shitboxes, high mileage heroes, part of the Auto Alex um, official artwork. We're talking t-shirts. We're talking posters. Everything. It's going to be amazing. But you will also be entered 99% sure to win a vehicle. And, and we're not just saying that just to get you to buy tickets, but that is the plan and I'm going to make sure it happens. Awesome. Before you move on quickly, yes. I do want to give a quick shout out to Dan for doing that artwork because yes. that is incredible. He's incredibly yeah. talented. DJJW Art is his mm. name and he's done, he does all the all the t-shirt designs and everything. So if I just, hold on. If I, so if you could see, sorry, I'm just pulling up my jumper. We, I were modified God, before you. Shit. You are catching up. I am actually catching up with you. My little, my little ticker as well has been uh, beating irregularly. I'm so. not surprised. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just, uh, just channeling my inner tailor. Mm. Uh, but yeah, Dan's really great. He's also going to be coming to the unit for about seven days to ten days solidly to do artwork for the walls. That's so very get cool. Big pieces of plywood, mm. and he's going to do right really nice pictures of the cars. So yeah, that is all coming up. Uh, right, what have we all been up to? It's been. It's been quite an exciting few days, isn't it, Rory? Yeah. Very exciting. Um, well, first of all, I'm just going to talk about a message I literally just got, which is from V Engineering. V Engineering? He's the man with the supercharger kit. Oh! And he's agreed for the 14th of this month that we are going to be installing the supercharger kit on my E46 Touring. <gasps> Which I think we will do a... 14th of this month? Yeah. Valentine's no, Day? No, February, sorry. <laughs> yes, okay, Valentine's Day. We're going to be installing a supercharger oh. on Valentine's Day. Well, yeah, I, I will so be romantic. away that day. Oh. I will be away that day because I'm going to be spending Valentine's Day with my wife. Rory. Why did no one tell me about this? You three. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Well, maybe we might change that date. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> sorry. Are you? God, you're such a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> but we I, might. We. we why we don't you? Install. Why don't you bring Ellie down? And I, she can help. Oh my God, she, she can help. help. Yeah. She would love it. Yeah. Actually, genuinely believe that we would need to find someone else because Rory would be dead. I think I would actually be oh, dead. Oh yeah, Because yeah. <laughs> I have actually booked a meal at a restaurant. So yes. Okay. Need to Fight change that. one. Cheers. <laughs> yeah. um, but, but, yes, supercharger kit will be being installed on the yeah. E46. Look how excited. Look so at your excited. little hamster face. Genuinely so excited. <laughs> and we still have our bet 
that if my E46 touring is quicker than Alex's, Alex will pay for half the kit. Oh, shit. I yeah. forgot that. But, but I I will be driving both cars, right? Yeah. Yeah. But 80% throttle on yours, right? Is that No, 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 no. No, it, it will, we are going to be driving them flat out. They're both going to be <clears throat> put to the test. Okay, hey, question. Yeah. I am obviously going to drive my car 10 tenths because it's my car. Are you now on this podcast giving me permission to drive your car 10 tenths? What, 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 no, what, like, uh, uh, I, I like, like literally not holding back. If it breaks, it breaks. Question. That's not, that's not my who, problem. Who fixes it when it throws a rod? <sighs> I don't know. That, that's a Rory problem. But to be fair, the engines are quite cheap for those, Rory. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, a, a bet's a bet. Like you could, uh, you could win a grand. What's the or, point? What's the, what's the point in even doing it if he doesn't drive it 10 times? You could win a grand, but you could also have to spend a grand on a new engine. This is the bet that you you have to take. Alex, but to be fair, Alex has to pay for a new engine anyway if it blows up on the channel. No, okay, to pay what? For damages. No. Actually, I'm going to change my mind. Oh, here we go. Let you back it down. You're going to drive your car. <clears throat> okay. And I'm going to see if there might be a certain someone free. Do you mean Mr. Ben? I do mean Mr. Ben. <laughs> You want Ben Collins to drive. You do realise he's going to drive it probably harder than I will. Yeah, but, but then I may actually stand a chance of beating you, though. Really? Yeah. And to be fair, if it does blow up, it'll make for great television. <laughs> and, and then we can charge Ben. Oh, if it breaks, yeah, it's his yeah, fault. Yeah, it's yeah, his fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, send him an invoice. He's probably still got loads of TV money, doesn't he, knocking about? Because yeah. I, I, I think there will be a great video on the fact of... Is it quicker to buy a supercharger kit for your E46 330i or put an M3 S54 engine in? <laughs> it depends who's well, we, doing it. Yeah, we know which one's more expensive. <laughs> and don't we, we? we know which yes. one's definitely <laughs> yes. a lot more expensive. Yes, yes, yes. yes but yes. which one is quicker? Okay. Bruno okay. seems to think that the supercharged one will be quicker. Hello, my name Bruno. It has more torque. Okay. Question. Okay. Yeah. How much do you think you spent on Barney so far? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, uh, yes, uh, the weather is fine. <laughs> no, light, genuinely, light how much do you reckon you spent? So, uh, mm, like, not not a crazy amount. Obviously, you know, because of YouTube collabs and stuff, yeah, yeah. stuff is a lot cheaper. Uh, Over I've... 15 grand? God, no. Oh, okay. God, no. Including the purchase price of the vehicle? Include, oh, because you, you f***ed me up on that. Yeah, 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 I did. What too. did I pay you for? You wanted four, four and a half. And I, four and a half. So I gave you four. Oh, you got it cheap. So, um, with... All the engine stuff that Bruno's done, stuff that I'll probably have to pay Reedish. You know what? This, including the price of the car, I'll probably have an E46 M3 touring for fourteen grand. Even after you've done all the interior retrain. I was going to. I was literally going to say. You know, wheels. you said finish by shed first. You do realise we still have the M3 seats here that wham, need to wham, be wham, retrimmed. Wham, wham, wham. Look, it's I, a challenge I've set myself. Shut up. I, I had a thought <laughs> about those the other day. You can't use those. Why? Well, because they're electric and you don't have the looms. And also, they fold forwards because they're for a coupe, and yours is a touring. Well, then I'll just get a set of buckets. So they're actually different buckets. frames. I'll get tillets. Get tillets. Yeah. Get four tillets. Oh, four tillets. <laughs> or get a tillet. Get them to make a custom a tillet, tillet bench. bench for the oh, back. Oh, yeah. With, with a harnesses. fold-down armrest. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Um, so, yeah, we're still talking about what you've been up to. Oh, yeah. And yeah, then, sorry. Yeah. Uh, and then we, we may have done a little trip, didn't we, guys? A, li a, little, a little trip. trip. A, oh, my a God. A little trip that turned into a mammoth <sighs> adventure. Yes. Thank you, France. Yeah. Of four countries in total, I think we went yeah. to. Yeah. Which, which doesn't sound a lot. Which a, a, but, a man named Terence James yeah. uh, offered us a free car yeah. in return for flying all the way to Monaco yes. Yes. and picking it up. Yes. So we did that. Yes. Last, what was it, Wednesday morning or Thursday? Uh, th Thursday morning. Thursday morning, we Thursday left the UK, yeah. flew to Nice. Terence picked us up in his lovely Mercedes. ML63. ML63. Which Thank sounds you. incredible. Oh my that God. Is mad. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, we went to his place, had a look at this car, had a quick walk around, said hello, said goodbyes, and, the, and then started uh, the long journey home. And it's a convertible and- Topless Terry. Topless, topless Terry. Terry. Instead of going north through France and everything because uh, the agriculture industry there well, is on its knees. So we didn't realise this was a problem, no, did we? No, we no. didn't do any research into the trip or whatever. I mean, we why could, would we? We just <laughs> as flew as to Nice, yeah. <laughs> That's your fault, Roy. You should, and, like, as, oh, yeah, as yeah. Producer, sorry, should, I, yeah. I should have. And I think it only became an issue when we left Monaco. Yeah. We went for a quick McDonald's, as you do, when, when, in, well, when in Rome. Just before that, Terence did say, 
Oh, you go, you do guys, you guys realise there is a load of strikes going on through France at the yeah, moment. Yeah, we and, were we, like, and we were like, ah, ah, we yeah. were like, it's France, of course there is. How bad can it be? <laughs> and, yeah, and I think it only became an issue when we were driving for about an hour. Yeah. We were driving for about an hour and then we saw a sign that just said, welcome to Italy. And we were like, oh shit, are we going the wrong way? <laughs> and then there was a good 20 minute argument with the fact that we thought Taylor had put the wrong destination in and we were yeah. driving completely the wrong way. But it turns out the French had done such a good job of blocking their motorways. Fair play, France. Um, that it meant the quickest route was to go through Italy, up through the Italian Alps, yeah, and then back over to France. And then we then had to take a load of back roads all the way up. All of the back roads. Yeah, loads of Every Which back French road. back roads, turns out, are not great. No, no where no. we were nearly killed. We, we were genuinely nearly killed. Mm. Yeah, so um, little back road. Lorries aren't supposed to be there, but there were a few lorries who were straying. Um, and there was a lorry coming towards us. And then all of a sudden... Out behind the lorry, pokes a van. And I look up and I'm like, holy shit, there's a van. And then both of you managed just to get in yeah. time. But that was genuinely quite close. I've yeah, never yeah. seen and that you would that have scared. Hurt. Yeah, genuinely. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I even had time to be scared. It was shock. You did more than react. Anything. Yeah, I, re yeah. I reacted. I was like, what the f going mm. on? But yeah, it was uh, quite, quite sketchy. But um, we obviously made it back in one piece. The video is currently being worked on. We are taking our time on it. Uh, but it will be like a 35, 45 minute epic road trip adventure yep, it was that, very we, fun. that the three of us went on. And yeah, we took a lot of time getting back. There's a lot of effort in the filming. So mm. we can't wait to release it. Can I just say, mm. we haven't even talked about the main issue with this car. Oh yeah. Well, there's lack of space. Yeah, the lack of mm. rear seats. Well, it's a two plus two. No, it's not. It's not. It's a two plus it's two. Not. That's it's, what they call it. It's a two plus half. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's got so half a the chair rear seats. It. If you have them in a normal, and this isn't even like a uh, a six foot position. If, even if Alex has it in his normal position, and you, we're about the same yeah. height. Thank you. Um, the seat actually pretty much touches the rear seat yes, space. It's not far off yet. Yep. So there's literally no leg room at all. Which I don't think we thought it was going to be that bad when we it got there. It was bad, but it yeah. meant that we did yeah like twenty hours of driving yep. with one person permanently in the back. Yep where you had to sit either sideways or one foot down, or there was another option, which I don't think we captured on camera, actually, which I, I, I'm quite annoyed that we didn't, where you could have your legs going across the center console, where you could then stick them underneath the uh, person who was driving's arm. <laughs> and then you could then operate the horn yes. with your foot. And the steering, yes. if you're and the feeling steering, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, honestly, such a good trip. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, made, we made very good progress in that car. It's uh, we quite did. a machine. There was a very surreal moment, wasn't there, when we were driving through the Alps. Yes. And there was just snow all over the mountains. Snow and, peak mountains. And, and, and it was going just, through the Alps. It was with the roof down as well. Yeah. That, Stars out. And we yeah. were like, this is pretty cool, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that was the highlight of my trip. At night, driving through the Alps, Alps, perfectly clear sky, full moon illuminating the mountains and all the snow. We had some great music on and we were just driving along stupidly at about four degrees with the roof down. It was yeah. it was very cold. It was very super cold. cold. We had that, the heater yeah. on full blast, but we were just looking. We were just we just looked up all yeah. the time and we were just admiring the fantastic scenery. And, and I was the only one who brought a coat as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so basically we had to rotate this coat round to whoever was sitting in the back seat. Because if you were in the back, you got no heating, you got yeah, no nothing. Yeah. All you got was wind hitting you, at, at, which sometimes as well, if if you got the wind catching you right, it would catch the top of the hood and then pull the hood up, where it then started trying to choke <laughs> yeah. you with with your own coat. It, it was oh, it so was a great trip. That's why you were so happy. Yeah. All the, <laughs> just in the back, that's being choked out. <laughs> yeah, it, it was fantastic. But um, I think as well, the Jag was fantastic. Oh uh, yeah, it's, it's a Jag, time. by the way. Are we not allowed to? Tell no, me? well we've skirted around the whole subject of what car it was. Oh, mm. do you want to edit that out? No, 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 it's fine. You've no, ruined it now. Well, it's a Jag. Jag. I'm not going to tell you what it's Jag is. It's a Jaguar um, XJ convertible. Right. Your, yeah, your yeah generation. that's definitely... Yeah, yeah. Definitely it's a co coach built thing. Yeah. But, yeah. It, and, but there's no leg room in the back of that for some reason. No, it's... In, in an XJ. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, the, mm. Well, mm. The, re the reason I mentioned it is Jag, because I got, we, we obviously left it at Tom Lempfels. And I got a phone call from Tom yesterday. Oh yeah, you, <gasps> so you, so do you, have you told? No, so you sold it to Tom Lenthal. Yeah, yeah, I sold it to Tom Lenthal. Yeah. So went to Monaco, got a free car, drove it back, sold it to Tom Lenthal. Uh, a fantastic deal. <laughs> yeah, I mean anything's a profit, right? Until he put it on the ramp. Oh, oh. and realised that it's got rust holes in the chassis. <gasps> really? Mm. But it looks so clean. 
I know. Wait, it wait, is the, is the money in your account? Uh, it will be in a... Oh, so he's not... We, we're he's still... still not, I, I said to him, are you still happy? He went, yeah, yeah, I'm still f***ing happy. He went, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a buyer's guide on the car because it's got oh, rust okay, in nice. really yeah, common yeah, yeah. places. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what he's going to do is a buyer's guide on it, what to look out for, the rust in the normal places, and then he's going to spend the rest of his life welding it up. Oh, fantastic. And he's going to he's going to restore it. So is, is it quite bad? Is it, it's, it's, he, I don't think it's too bad, but it's it's obviously unexpected. So but is he, he doing a video on the Tom Lenthal workshop? Yes, yeah, he will okay. be doing a video on the Tom Lenthal workshop on, uh, on what to look out for with that particular example, like that particular model. Yeah. A buyer's guide on what faults to look out for and how much they cost to repair and stuff like that. And then he will be fixing it and then selling it. Is he going to do a road trip to Monaco? I doubt it. He should do. Tom, you should do that. Do you know one thing, though, about that route that we uh, got forced to take, which did mean that we get to go through a lot of tunnels, which that car mm. has an amazing sounding oh my exhaust note. Yeah, because you have the supercharger wine mixed in with the V8 noise coming out of the back. It mm. was a it was really good sound. Mixed in car. with a man in the back screaming. <laughs> and, and, it had, <laughs> and it had back box deletes. It did. Yeah, yeah, do you remember yeah, yeah. that point, Rory? You pointed it out. It'd get to a certain RPM and it'd make that brrrr yeah, noise. Yeah. Oh, it sounded yeah. so good. So anyway, we won't spoil any more, but um, next week there will be an epic, epic uh, road trip video coming your mm. way, which is very exciting. That definitely uh, doesn't have a jag in it. No, no. Well done. <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> no, no. That's it. All right. Okay, I'll go next. Uh, so we got back. We got back on Friday evening, didn't yeah. we? It was not as late as we thought. Not we as late as, yeah, be. exactly. Because yeah. you thought it would actually bleed into Saturday morning. I didn't expect Taylor to drive all the way till like two o'clock in the morning yes. for us to only have about five hours sleep and then yes, carry on. Indeed. I, I was a very efficient driver. That's yes. why I got back very, early. very fishy driver. Uh, so <laughs> got back on the Friday, Saturday I woke up and then I came to this unit and I did a podcast with a good friend of mine, uh, Mr. John Markar, who runs the Driven podcast where we talked about uh, YouTube, car throttle, stuff moving forward. It was really, really interesting. So that will be coming out on the Driven podcast soon. So make sure you follow that and like that and subscribe to that. Then I drove to uh, back home and my in-laws were there seeing Rianne, having a look at the house. So uh, Joe and Dave. Hello, Dave. How's it going? Oh, I love Dave. Yeah, we do. Oh, yeah. So I parked up and um, said hello. And then I just went straight in for a hug. And he was like, oh, we're doing that, are we? I was like, yes, we are. Because if it's good enough for Taylor, it's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we had a really nice lunch and I sat down opposite Dave and he was wearing this like bright red auto Alex uh, sweatshirt. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he walks around London wearing his um, his black kind of uh, auto Alex beanie as well. He's like re Bless repping him. so hard. It's so I love good. Dave. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I had a really nice um, lunch with those guys. And then um, in the evening, went out with a few friends uh, on Saturday night, got a bit. Slo sh schlozzled. Schlozzled. And and what else happened? Anything happened in the in the pub? In, in the pub. In, in, yeah. the, in the wine bar. In the wine, wine bar. bar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. uh, <laughs> um. It turned into one of your nights, Taylor. Uh, oh. No, it was <laughs> one of your typical nights. Thank you very much. Because yes. if there's one thing I know of Alex Kirsten is that when he's drunk, he's a bad influence. Uh, pff, yeah. Uh. But, but he'll walk up to you and go. You trust me. You right? trust me, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to have to move on very, very quickly. Though. So what we, we are in a cancel culture. <laughs> yes. Remember that. But yes. what, what happened in this wine bar? We had some drinks and that was fun. <laughs> and then. <laughs> anyway. And then. And then no, and then. <laughs> and then. Uh, and so Saturday I woke up <laughs> feeling, feeling a little bit worse for wear. And. Um, Let's just saw and let's just say I saw a Prince Albert. <laughs> <laughs> on Sunday, uh, Sunday at three PM, I drove to Chobham Services and I met a lovely man called Eddie, uh, who messaged me on Instagram saying, "I see you've got a nine nine three. I have got a turbo front bumper for that car. Would you like it?" So we met at the services yesterday, and he, ha sure enough, he handed me over a nine nine three turbo bumper that needs work, it needs paint, and it's a bit cracked and blah blah blah. But it will um mm. it'll it'll look really nice on that. That's very so cool, yeah. That's cool. What's happening? Oh Rory's Rory is picking it up. There it there is. There you go. If you're listening with your ear holes, uh Rory has picked up the uh turbo front bumper, which looks very similar to Nigel's bumper, except it's just yeah. It looks a little bit different. But if you know you know. You know exactly, exactly right. And um oh, I've got a bit of indigestion. It's because you know, you're old. It's it's because I'm old. And, um, you know, we've been talking about X5s for me. Yeah. And how 
for the good of the business, I need next five, you, you know, high towing capacity. You, you just and, want one. And all of that. So I, I need to, otherwise we're going well, to have to shut down. Well, you do actually now. Yeah. Because yeah. we have semi sort of an agreed to deal, haven't we? Have we? I can't even remember. Uh, yeah, no. So uh, Alex, Alex's memory's a bit hazy. If it's about Big Pete, you can shut your mouth. Uh, that's yeah, so, not a deal. so Big Pete, me and Alex have agreed to deal. No. Big Pete is now going to be my nope. car. Um, no. Nope. So yeah. <laughs> not yeah, even you, a chance. I can understand that you do need the X5 now Rory, for the business. Not even a chance. In all fairness... He has already bought you a car within the last year. So you oh, no, no, I'm, I'm buying Big Pete. Okay, I can, I'm buying it. What was the What was the price we agreed? Eight. We, 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 we agreed no, eight. No, no, it must be eight. No, no, it's a facelift. No, no, because it, no, really it's a Discovery yeah. Four. They're it is a Discovery Four look, with a good engine. Look, at the end of the day, <sighs> just got to look at it for face value. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say that it's got no glow plugs. It doesn't work in the winter. Uh, so it's got glow plugs are being worked on as we speak. Uh, yeah, at, no, at, at the moment, they it have doesn't have any glow plugs. They have all snapped off in the head. Okay, it's so I, okay, I'll say to Tom, don't bother. All right, stop what you're doing. All right, and then you will have a car with snap glow plugs, right, and then deal? it will be your problem. Deal. Five grand. No. Off. Don't you off me? <laughs> no. <laughs> Five grand all day long. No, 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 no. That car Ooh. is too good for you, so you can piss off. No. Uh, anyway, so, but yeah, that's why you need the X5. Because, yeah, sure, 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 I now own so, Big Pete. No, you don't. I do. No, get <laughs> over do. yourself. <laughs> X5s. Okay, so you messaged me, was it last week, saying, I found the perfect car for you. Yes. Uh, and it is, I can find it. All right, you, you get it up. It is an X5. It's a 40D, uh, really, really, really high spec. Like the highest spec in the world. It's got 360 camera. It's got the... Uh, electric tow bar, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, blah. It's a nice color. It is a very nice color. It's great. It's very similar in color to my F11, isn't it? Mm. And um, it's priced at 11 and a half thousand pounds. Which is for nothing. Which usually, this is a 16 or 17 or even 18 thousand pound car. Mm. The reason it's priced so cheap is because it's got 234 thousand miles on the clock. I would love to know why it's so high mileage. Do you yes. think it was an ex-police car? Well, this is what Eddie said, the guy with the 993 bumper. But the spec is so high. Like, what no. police force yeah. would have... Because they don't have... It's got a panoramic roof, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's got, like, the Which beautiful brown... Police don't have panoramic Brown roof. interior well, and all of that. It could have been an un undercover police car. Well, it, so in that case, I got told by everyone that my old X5, which is now your X5, uh, oh, yeah. is also apparently on a registration that is reserved for police cars in Scotland. Really? Can yeah. we have a look at the reg of this X5 then? I and can't then... find it. Is that oh, why mine's so shit? Because it's been raked about by the police and smashed Probably. Up. I don't know, but yeah, according according to... I've been told that by like multiple different people. That, really? that the SF is reserved for like police vehicles. I thought it was SP. No, SF in Scotland or something. I thought it was SP57. I don't know. Either way, the really weird thing is, is that um, if this was an ex-police car, why would the police be going back to a dealership to buy a newer X5? Because the dealership said, we took this in as part exchange. And I said, did you get it from an auction? He was like, no, 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 this is a part exchange car. I don't know if I trust them. Oh, I mean, you, can never, you can never trust a dealership. Have you car verticaled it? Yes, and it's all clear. One thing that makes me think it could have been a police car, which yeah. is a bit weird, mm -hmm. is the fact that it's M Sport, but it's got chrome trims around the windows. And what about the fact that it's, it's got, got a got... cell in the back and the police lights on right. top? And it's got completely clear windows. Yeah. No well, so tinted does my, windows. So does my F11, though. That's completely clear. But that's an SE. But normally, X5s come with factory tints. I don't know, weird one. Maybe we'll do some investigation. How, how can we find out if this is the next cop car, though, when I we're there? Know. Has anyone tried putting a reg into Google? No. Did I do that? Doesn't it, do doesn't... That. What is it? All right. DN... 14. DN... RPY. It R says Ropey on the number Ropey. plate. Yeah, so it's perfect. So um, we actually phoned these guys as well. Because we found... Look, it says, use 2014 BMW X5 DN14 RPY. And, and the, uh, the website is Car Snitch. Oh. Car snitch. What's car snitch? I oh, know. I think car snitch is just a shit version of auto trader. Car snitch. Do we finally have, you know what? If someone who, if, if it doesn't already exist. Car images. Do you know what? Oh, there we go. So this is 234. I think it's just pulling information from auto trader onto a. I was going to say, so do you know Weird. auto tempest in America? Yeah. Um, where it somehow searches eBay, Auto Trader, well, well their equivalent of Auto yeah. Trader. It searches everything. Why don't we have one of those websites in the UK? 
don't know, maybe there's a gap in the market. This is what I'm saying. Someone needs to invent this website. Auto Tempest need to come over to the UK. Shall I invent it? Go on then. Diesel grey. Why what are you doing? A car vertical check on it? No, no, this is just a random, random website. I've done the car vertical, it's all clear. I'm just wondering if this doesn't, was telling me doesn't any car more vertical information. come up and let you know if it's a, no, it's a taxi, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, okay. I mean, so these guys, <clears throat> they are, where are they from? J, uh, JA Motorsport in Bradford. Um, they actually know of Auto Alex, and um, I spoke to him. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you went, you went, you went to France in uh, in the BX, didn't you? In it, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh yeah, great, great video, mate. And then, so he knows of Auto Alex. Sorry, what was that accent? <laughs> it's like Bradford, bro. Bradford, yeah, yeah. So well, I don't know how to do a Bradford accent, but that's that's what I imagine they would do. Um, shut. He's been quite difficult to get hold of, and I, I've asked him about service history about ten times. So yeah, originally we found this car. Uh, I spoke to him before Christmas time. It, yeah, like it was mid December. It was yeah, mid December. I think found it was up car. for sale for like 14? 14 and a half grand or something. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then I asked about service history, and then I never heard back. And then you sent me the uh, listing again, and yeah. they reduced it by about three grand. Why? Mm. Yeah, but well, even even still. If the engine does blow up, it's still cheaper to buy this and then just replace the engine. It is. That is Surely. true. That is true. And it's such high spec as well. It is so high spec. And it has a tow bar. <clears throat> it has a tow bar. It has everything I want. So I'm going to phone him up now. What, now? Yeah, just one last time. Sorry, everyone, because we are going to be going to Bradford after this podcast, straight after. How, a question. Yeah. Because it's in Bradford, yeah. how many undescribed faults do you think there are going to be? I'm going to ask him now. I'm going to ask him. Yes. And he knows that we're going to be filming and everything. <coughs> so if he pulls a wall over our eyes. Hello, Hello mate. How you doing? It's, uh, it's Alex. I am calling you this morning around uh, 10 past 10. Oh, I never, I never got a missed call. Yeah, I've, I did try calling. Oh, I've, got, I've got really bad reception in this, um, in this unit. Oh, okay, that's weird. Uh, anyway, have you got uh, have you got an update on the service history and bits and bobs? Yeah, I think it's got a service history of one hundred and seven thousand. Um, I've rang the chap up. Um, it was his wife's car they were using together. He said they need to find the history and send it to us. Okay. But as of now, with that, that's all we've got currently with it. So you've got less than half service history on it. Basically, at the moment, yes. Is there any paperwork with it? Uh, paperwork is in. Like invoices of work done. There's, there's not much. There are a couple that were in the car, but there's, there's no, there's not massive with it. But it's been a one owner car, you know, since they've had it, literally from 2014. Has it been owned by a police force? Um, it hasn't, no. Are you sure? <laughs> um, from yeah, um, from what we're aware of, it hasn't. No. <laughs> okay. I mean, if you're an HBI, it'll come up. For example, if it's been, depending on what HBI you do, you know, if it's been as a police car or a taxi or. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. And I know you've got it up for eleven and a half. Um. If we come up, what kind of uh, what kind of price would you be happy with? What, what, what are you thinking? Oh, I'm thinking like five grand. <laughs> five grand. No, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I mean, how how close to, how close to ten can you get? Um, probably not ten, to be honest. I've got someone else that's rang up about it as well this morning. Believe it or not. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so, how close um, to ten can you get? The, Good chat about it. Let me get. Like, no, no, no. We we wouldn't do it for ten. We'd probably do it for eleven. 11 okay all right um i'll, I'll have a chat with Definitely my and a half. i'll have a chat with my friends and I'll, I'll get back to you in a bit but yeah i i am interested and i would come and yeah based on inspection take it away today put all the money in your account obviously so uh hopefully That's we nice. can come up with a good deal no problem all right. you, okay cheers speak to you in a bit bye that's a 10 and a half grand car isn't it oh no 10 we get it for 10 <laughs> <laughs> we get it for 10 all right hmm <clears throat> There's no, there's so I think the 107k, I imagine they've gone on the BMW computer yes. and requested I, I the reckon, service history. Yeah, yeah. Which, I, so it's, it's probably a gen, which to be fair, that's quite good. Genuine BMW for 107,000. Yeah. Also, the fact that it's on 234,000 miles, it tells me that it probably has been looked after. Mm. Well, you'd like to think so. Yeah. Otherwise but it as, as you said, worst comes to the worst. Even if it needs a whole new engine, it's still cheaper than... Like, what, the next cheapest one, 40D with a tow bar. 40D, you're looking at... Tw it was like 16, 18, 18 20 grand for, yeah, yeah, for yeah, one. Yeah, I couldn't yeah, find yeah. one cheaper for 18, 20 grand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's interesting. So anyway, the plan is, after the podcast, we're going to drive up to Bradford, 
buy it, do a quick walk around, blah, blah, blah. And then that is going to be this week's video. If we don't buy it, then we don't have a video. So, uh, so that's that's me out. What about you, Taylor? What have you been up to? Well, it's been a few podcasts since I've actually it done has. an update, isn't it? And they've so, been doing very well. Really well. Really Thank you. Well. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. you, weren't you on the last podcast, actually? Yeah, with Tom Lenthal. Oh yeah, I was. Yeah, no, tell yeah. her. Yeah, I forgot about that. You were quite, you, you, you missed, were quite miserable. You missed, though, you missed one yeah. podcast, and then you're up in arms. Yeah, yeah. I'm, well, I'm, the podcast means a lot to me. Does it? Yeah. Well, I, then why I, don't I you really put some enjoy doing the podcast? Why don't you try and be? Off? Why don't you try and be funny and come up with good <laughs> stories? Your rock. Anyway, we since, need more fires. <clears throat> you need to start more fires. Speaking of the last podcast, last podcast that I did was with Tom Lempfall, and on that particular day, my van exploded. <laughs> And when I say oh, exploded, no. the gearbox blew up, yep. or, the, or the dual mass flywheel, or whatever it was, and it was so loud, the neighbours could hear it. Really? And the curtains were twitching, yeah. yeah. It was really bad. Well, we actually heard you arrive. Yeah, and mm. I had to do an hour and a half drive home after that, yeah. and it got worse, trust Did me. It? So anyway, uh, I sold my van to a lovely chap who's going to bring it to Shedfest. He Is knew he? about all the problems with it, um, and you know, that it needs a, a, a dual mass, and, and it's got head lift, and this, that, and the other. Are you going to buy it back at Shedfest? <laughs> That you won't buy a back at I'll be honest with you. There's not... I, I, I do sell a lot of cars. There are some vehicles that I get really attached to, especially like the ones that I've got at the moment. I see I'm very attached to them. I do form an emotional attachment with vehicles, yeah. which is quite bad when you're a dealer because you do get a bit attached to stuff. The van, although it was a bit shit and I didn't have it for very long, when I sold that vehicle, I drove away... And I couldn't look because I genuinely oh. nearly cried. Oh, no. I was so upset. And as soon as I drove away, I said it out loud to myself. I said, I've made a mistake here. And I, I sat in silence the whole way home. However, how much did you buy a working van off me for? Well, I got done over. I paid four grand for it. How much did you sell a completely van for? Four grand. <laughs> <laughs> so who got done over here? Well, you did all right. You got some I good did use right. out of it and you didn't lose any money. I did all right. Well, I did lose a bit because I did spend some money on it. I probably spent close to a grand on it because mm. um, I did the timing belt He's, on it. Yeah, he and, spent close to a grand on the stuff that he probably shouldn't have done. Uh, timing, timing. Uh, time. Timing belt. Timing belt. I did a new expansion yeah. tank, new coolant. Yeah, the uh, lights. Rear the lights. lights I did a full service. Yeah. I put rear, LED rear lights on it and Apple CarPlay on it and yeah, a facelift yeah. steering wheel. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. <clears throat> but, you know, it, it was... I, it was a very, very smart van. Yeah, and I, I think you it. suit a van. You need to, yeah. you, we need to find you a van. Maybe oh, at Shedfest, bring a van that I, we will buy. I would or, love to get that. Taylor buys that back at Shedfest. I, 10 grand. To be it's a 10 grand van, though, isn't it? To be mm. honest with you, I don't think he'd sell it back. Do you not think? He's, well, he watched the video of when we bought it, and he's been looking for a van for over a year. Wow. And he said that he wanted to com camper convert it, oh, which nice. is really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I adored that van. There was something about it. I got ridiculously attached to it in a short period of time, and I was really, really upset. I was going through a bit of hardship when I sold it as well, like stuff going on with the unit or whatever. Yeah. And I was just a really fire. emotional and a fire. <laughs> and uh, a and, bit of hardship. We call it a fire, a bit of hardship. Well, <laughs> and yeah, and yeah, it was, I was very emotional. So I would like to get another van one day, but they are bare spenny. Yeah. They're very expensive. How annoying is it that BMW never made a van? A van yeah. with an M57. Uh, Imagine that. Be the best van which, in the world. Well, speaking of which, I've seen a few people uh, M57 swap sprinters and yes, transits recently. the transit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That um, is like the perfect daily yeah, driver, isn't quite it? quite funny, yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of vans and buying back vans as well, another thing about Shedfest. Uh, didn't we agree that we would buy a car each at Shedfest? Yeah, so I've mentioned to you about potentially setting up a trade area where oh, people yeah, bring their cars yes. and put them in, an, in a set area when they're for sale. Yes, I need to speak to Chiro from Petrol Hedonism about yes. that. Yes, and then what we do is we have a set budget or whatever we do. Yep. We have to buy a car at Shedfest and then I'm assuming we're going to take it on like a road trip or whatever afterwards. Yeah, that's a great idea. So yeah, we and have to we buy a car everything. each. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is each, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Your budget will be... Uh, 500 quid and mine will be 10 grand great and then whoever has the still, best car i will probably still get a better car than you because you're rubbish yeah. at no cars. that is that is fair that is fair <laughs> but uh right but yeah is that is that you sorry no no sorry, um, i'm just rushing through so I'm sorry speaking of x5s yes. um i've bought rory's x5 you as have, he mentioned yeah. how's that going uh well at first i really didn't like it i got in it and i was like yeah I don't you, like you were it. huffing and puffing when yeah you were, uh, i i and and no, I because I, it is a good car. It was so the deal was cutting back a little bit. I actually swapped it for your E twenty eight with a bit of money your way. With a little bit of money my way to because the X five is so shit. Um, and I got in it and I was like, I don't like this car. I want to sell it. I need to fix it and sell it immediately. 
And then I brought it here and I was in a mood and I, I reversed it into the trailer because the bumper's Taylor, fucked. Sorry, anyway. Taylor in a mood? No, no, like no, I was, no, I'm no. a very emotional person. You are so emotional. I know, but that's yeah. good. So Is anyway, it? yes. And uh, <laughs> and I didn't like it and I was like, I can't wait to sell this thing. I hate it. And then the more I drove it, the more I was like, this is actually a really good car. Because you used to have the... I've had two. You, right, yeah. You, But you had... The last one well, you I've, had was I've had a... had three. A 30D, though. No, I've had two 30Ds and I've had a 40D. I had a f 11 plate 40D facelift. Oh, oh, yeah, you did. The recent one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and I, I liked all of them, but after a short period of time, I was like, I don't like them anymore. There was something that put me off of each of them. I couldn't quite put my finger on what it is. And the main thing was the gearbox. I, d I don't really like the autos. And I used to change up a bit early, blah, blah, blah. Did they ever make a manual? No. Mm. Can, cannot get an E70 manual. And I drove yours and I was like, this is actually really good. And I think it's because it's been mapped and it's so fast that it changes up a bit early, but it just pulls itself along. Mm. It's got a fantastic pick up like it picks up at like 1500 rpm it actually and slows the rotation of the earth it, it does it's so it? yeah, yeah. fast that, yeah. that initial acceleration from it like the zero to 40 is is it's is, incredible it's ridiculous yeah it is incredible i actually towed with it as well it's a really really good tow vehicle very comfortable um i don't really trust its reliability i feel like it is probably going to break at some point but we'll get around to that when it happens i'm i am going to do a few bits to it, it needs a few little bits but yeah, I'm probably just going to keep it, to be honest, because it's, it's a good it's vehicle. It's a good tow vehicle, isn't it? Yeah. It's nice to float about in. It needs a bit of body wear. I can't sell it as it is anyway, because it does have some problems, like the sunroof doesn't work, the glow plugs don't work, the parking sensors don't work, the rear bumper's not good, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've got that at the moment. Brick is still with me. He's still broken, as usual. Um, oh, brick. I've also, uh, moving on to the update, I've been working on stuff for the V2 channel. Yep, I bought another have. car. It's a, it's an old 80s classic car that I found in an, it is a bit of a barn find. Um, so I bought it. It's got a really, really special story it's to it. It's an E28 Alpina. Shut up. It's got a really <laughs> special story to it. He spoiled the it. Jaguar. I'm going to spoil the V2. <laughs> but anyway, it's got a really special story it to it. Cool, it was yeah. very emotional when we bought it. Um, and yeah, so that's very cool. Been working on that. The unit, mm -hmm. dun, 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 unit mm -hmm. update. That's coming along well. A lot of the fire damage we managed to clean off the wall so we nice. didn't have to repaint it, which has saved a lot of time and money. Uh, I have been to a company called Twinbush, oh, yeah. which are a German company. And they've done me a really good deal on a two-post ramp, mm -hmm. some storage cabinets, a new toolbox and stuff like that. And uh, I, I was really down a couple of weeks ago because of the whole unit fire in the van and everything. It all got a bit on top of me. And then we went there and we got this really good deal on all of this stuff. And I was like, this has made the whole thing worth it. Wicked. It really, really nice. brought me up, uh, really cheered me up. And uh, yeah, the ramp is now installed. Me and Luke installed it. Oh, shit. And we wired it in. Really? And it works. Wow. But it was a funny moment because we wired it all in. I plugged it in and I pressed the up button and we were like, oh. <gasps> and it started to go up really slowly and we were like we we're just bleeding the hydraulic fluid and all of a sudden Luke went whoa 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 and there was oil everywhere <laughs> <laughs> and we hadn't tightened up one of the hydraulic oh, hoses no. and it was everywhere so it's done a great job of lubricating and rust rust proofing my floor fantastic um so yeah that's now all in all the cabinets are in the toolboxes are in it is looking proper Parker. it's starting to look like a proper workshop so Amazing. have you put a car actually on the ramp yet? i haven't yet because we've just put the legs on and we've got to there's little curtains that go up the sides we've got to put those on and a few other little bits but the first car that should be going on it should be this BMW that I've bought for the V2 channel, and we're going to film uh, the second episode of that in my unit Ooh, on the ramp there we go. and do some special Are you little excited bits to it. Oh, I'm ever so excited. <laughs> ever so good. excited. Also, um, the office is being built next week while yep. we're away because we're going away on a road trip we are, next yeah, week. Yep. While that's away, my unit uh, office is being built oh. because I've been without a two post ramp and an office since August. Yeah. So, all this is very exciting yeah. to me. Uh, also going to have a bog, hopefully, as well, so I can do lots of shitting. Where have you been shitting? Uh, the BP garage up the road. Really? Yes. <laughs> oh, God. I'm surprised they haven't put a picture with your face on it saying no entry. And it's one of those Wanted. really annoying ones, because when you sit on it, and you le if you lean even slightly backwards, it flushes itself, Does and it? you get a wet arse. <laughs> and it's really it's, it's funny that we're talking about, um, talking about Taylor on the toilet, because if you scroll down, like all the way down, we'll, uh, we'll come to something in a little bit. 
Anyway, continue, please. Um, but yeah, so I've been up to that as well. That's all very exciting. Um, Alpina's coming along well. Obviously, the third episode of my Alpina build is now released on the V2 channel. Yep. If you haven't watched that, have a watch. And uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully you will enjoy it. That was my first, do you know, that was my first ever car review. Oh, yeah. Well, my no, I mean, first... you've, done, you've done kind of car reviews. Not really. Well, when when we've been knocking. Well, I've oh, done sorry. a little bit of a little bit of writing, but uh, uh, not writing a little bit of uh, like talking about the car. But that was my first ever car review. Did you get it? Sorry, it's underneath twenty questions. Are you still trying to find the toilet thing? Yeah. So Rory's going to read through uh, through an email, and the email is. Is this the podcast feedback? Underneath 20 questions, right? Underneath 20 questions, find? it says, if you could relaunch Top Gear, what would it look like? But I'm pretty sure that's what we asked the stick. Well, uh, would it look like Taylor on the toilet? Have uh, you on the wrong mm, podcast? No. Have a look. Uh, there's a picture of a car. Yeah. Have a look under there. Have a look under there. Anyway, is that, is that us um, up to date? What you got here? You got a piece of paper? Oh, yeah. I found this in the boot of my car. Yeah. Because uh, I, I, I think it was in the van, actually, when I was clearing out the van. Because <laughs> yeah. I've cleared out a lot of my cars recently. And it's a letter or a little post-it thing from Alex and uh, Rianne from their wedding day. Yeah. We gave out, like, cars. The second yeah, yeah, yeah. Day. And I only found this again the other day. It's quite funny. <laughs> and it reads... <laughs> 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 what's, what's happened? No, no way! <laughs> is this is genuine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this in a minute. I'm gonna read okay. this out in a minute. Yeah, right. Right, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it reads: <laughs> Dear Taylor, Rianne is making me write thank you cards. So here I am pretending to write something meaningful. My ADHD is popping and and <laughs> up my thumb, so I have nothing else to say to you. You are my favourite big. Can't say that though. <laughs> Now let's go smash up some cars. Big love, Alex and Rianne. Oh, that's And that nice, is just you yeah. in a nutshell. That is, yeah. Speaking of my thumb, my thumb started hurting again on Saturday. And I was like, Taylor, really? My thumb. Do you know what? I can, I can get up remotely. <laughs> I've put a little thing in <laughs> is it. Is that what you've been So doing? that when I press a button, I can up your thumb. All right, okay, okay. That's fantastic. Um, that's very nice. But yeah, I think I'm pretty sure that is me up to date, actually. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's all, all lovely, lovely. Well, um, that leads us uh, nicely to this week's shout out to our very good friends and sponsor, Febby Bilstein, who make OE matching quality parts. And you also get a three year guarantee. So if you go to Euro Car Parts or wherever you buy your car parts, then make sure, like us, you look out for Febby Bilstein. We've used and we continue to use Febby Bilstein parts for the past, well, it's got to be like eight months now, hasn't it? Well, I mean, Big Pete's having Febby glow plugs put in right now. Yes, that is true. <laughs> um, BMW's E30 was pretty much restored thanks to Febby brakes, yeah. all the rest of it. You use Febby and we just order loads of stuff. And mm. uh, yeah, we really, really rate their stuff. So again, shout out to Febby Bilstein, not only for sponsoring the podcast, but because they make really, really quality uh oe matching parts so look out for them next time you're in euros or wherever you go i've been using their parts for years they're really good good really yeah, really good nice. that is good um right uh we received an email from an audience member a guy called mark johnson and he wrote in on the uh podcast email which is podcast at autoalexcars.com <laughs> oh nearly <laughs> there we go right so mark johnson has written Alex, Taylor, and Rory. Love the channels and podcast. So glad Chris Harris finally answered your call. This past year has been crazy for me, and your content has been huge in keeping me sane and focused. I listen to the podcast while doing my physical therapy exercises. The reason I have to do physical therapy is actually car-related. So, if you'll indulge me a little. February last year, I crashed one of my shitboxes, a 99 Camry V6. A little bit of fog had made the roads damp and I went off on a curve of a back road. The bad bit was I wasn't wearing my seatbelt. Oh. As a result, I shattered the T12 vertebrae in my spine and partially severed my spinal cord after being ejected from the car. I came to on the side of the road, unable to move my legs. Five weeks of hell commenced at Harborview Hospital after they fused my spine back together and tried to figure out what I could do. They would then ask me what my goals were, and when I told, told them I wanted to drive again, they would tell me it wasn't possible. But that wasn't good enough for me. The O2 CRV 5-speed manual transmission that was my dad's daily when I was a kid was sitting in my garage, and I refused to let it rot. After gruesome physical therapy, and within a month, I was walking with a normal walker, and after two months, 
I was back on the road with all the thoughts of not knowing what my future would look like or whether I'd be able to ever drive again. Watching an auto Alex video always brought my spirits up in the hospital. And then in brackets, the Matt Wood video really hit home for me and I was crying like a baby. And now I have the podcast to listen to while I do my physical therapy exercises. And as of this email, I've put 9,000 miles on that CRV since the doctors and nurses told me I'd never get to drive again. I'm forever grateful for the three of you for being a positive influence in my life during one of my lowest moments. If not for you guys, I might have listened to the doctors and nurses who said I would never drive again and may never have even tried. Now, almost a year later, the only reminder I have of that accident is some back pain and a brace I wear on my right leg for balance. I've included some photos of the crash and of my CRV, my pride and joy. Thanks again from everything, for everything. Much love from Seattle, Mark. And if you have a look at this picture, Taylor. Oh, oh my God. My God. Yes. That, uh, that is a bad crash. So yeah, Toyota Camry, we have got a rear-facing shot for everyone listening uh, with your ear holes. It's a white car and it has flipped multiple times. The boot lid is at a massive angle. The whole roof is caved in and up on one side. It looks like someone has folded like the side of the car into itself. It looks like an elephant sat on it. It does. It yeah. looks like if you were on Photoshop and then sort of dragged it from a corner and yeah. just stretched yeah. it out from yes. one side over yes. to the other corner. I'm, I mean, yeah, it's, 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 I mean, yeah, not wearing a seatbelt is not great, but do you think he would have done much better in that car? That, <sighs> that it looks very yeah. like, yeah. The, Who knows? Maybe it was a good thing, but please, for the love of God, always wear your seatbelt. Yes. Because let's assume it's a fairly modern car. He probably wouldn't have severed his, his spinal cord. Mm. Uh, but yeah, Mark, great to hear that you're doing all right. And uh, yeah, thanks for the, uh, thanks for the mess message, the positivity. Uh, and also a reminder to us that, you know, we do a podcast for entertainment, but it also means a lot more to a lot more people. Yeah, so, um, definitely. Yeah. We are doing God's work. <laughs> Right? Okay, okay. This is our vocation. Yeah. Yeah. It's we should be government backed. Like what, what as a charity? Yeah. Okay. You are a charity. You're a charity case. No, that's fair. Um anyway, <laughs> let's now move it on to 20 questions. I am thinking of a car, and it is up to Taylor and Rory to decipher what car that is by asking no more than 20 questions, and I can only answer with a yes. Or no answer. Uh, can Rory, we you're just deep in thought? Can we just remind ourselves of what your last choice was? Yes, it was a Vauxhall Mariva. This is why you <laughs> haven't been given a choice for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it was good though. You didn't get it. Yeah, because it was a Vauxhall Mariva. It's not even interesting. The whole point of the oh god, you, oh, does it need to be interesting? Yes, well, oh, sort of. Yeah. Right, I'll start. Okay, here is we go, here is we it go. Japanese? No. Is it European? Yes. <laughs> Are you stuck? Uh, <laughs> his country's next, Taylor. Mm. Is it French? No. Is it British? No. Is it Swedish? No. Is it Italian? No. Is it German? No. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> Is it Czech? No. <laughs> Taylor is blinking at me incessantly. <laughs> um, He's flying with is you. Is it... <laughs> Is it, uh, what else is in Europe? <laughs> um, huh? Is it, um, huh? hey. so we've had Swedish, German, it's, yeah, it's, British. We're going to have to rattle through this. Is it and, Irish? and 20 questions, we're guessing the car, right? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Not is the it, country. Is it Irish? You don't get to, uh, no. no I, I, I just made him clarify there that it wasn't a motorbike because I know Alex. Oh, okay. no, 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 no. Okay. <clears throat> Pup. <laughs> Uh, another European country, please, Rory. Wait, what? What did he? Irish. What car is in Ireland? Uh, the DMC DeLorean. DeLorean. Yeah. That would be very obvious, wouldn't I'm it? I'm just going to look on a map. No, you are not. <laughs> Put it away. <laughs> you are blow up. Is Come it on. Spanish. It's Spanish. Okay. Yeah. Is it a Seat? It's a Seat. <laughs> What's his mom's Seat? <laughs> is it a Leon? No. <laughs> Twelve. Is it, it old? Pre-2000. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Yes. It, it, is the cast currently still being produced under a different name? 
or under the or under the same name, like like the Ibiza, the Leon, whatever. You know, they've carried on their names throughout their. Is generation. it still being produced? No. Okay. <gasps> Fourteen. Is it a Felicia? No, that's a Skoda. But that's thank you. Oh sh. There you go. You're up to fifteen now. It's a Sayat. <laughs> a Sayat Felicia. <laughs> what was I thinking? Does was it was it being produced in the two thousands? Yes. <gasps> Sixteen. Is it an Arosa? Nope. Seventeen. <sighs> A Sayat. I'm testing your Sayat knowledge here, oh, boys. I don't have a lot of Sayat is knowledge. It, <laughs> is Does it, it have an FR badge on it? Uh, no. Oh, did it, oh 18. Mm, shit. Mm. Is it an Alhambra? It's an Alhambra! <laughs> <laughs> yes! You did it! You did it! Well done! Yeah. Oh, that was crunch time. I don't even know what an Al Alhambra it's, is. It's like basically a, a full galaxy. Oh, yeah. okay. You've picked another boring vehicle. <laughs> I did, I did. But is it, haven't I made a boring car exciting? Yeah? <laughs> now, speaking of which, by yes. the way, I was doing some Googling. You know you said BMW have never made a van before. Someone has done a concept image. I've seen it. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, of yeah, what a really BMW good. van would look like. <gasps> oh my so God. Basically, oh, I'm in love. For any anyone listening it's, I'm in love. it's basically a Ford Transit custom that someone's put an X5M front end on oh and that's got to have an what, with that X5 would have wheels an N50s N50. it would have a twin turbo V8 in it mm. no, what shut up <laughs> no we're talking like M50 what's the modern M57 N57 N57 that with an N57. Oh my God, you less compliant. Ah, oh, it is oh. amazing. Why it's haven't really BMW done a van before? <sighs> BMW don't do commercial vehicles. Why they have? They? Don't know. Do you remember when uh, Mercedes started doing it? And we were like, holy shit. I remember when, when the Sprinter came out and I was like, this is crazy. When was that? In the 40s? <laughs> uh, 39. But you, Mercedes... That was like when commercial. Mercedes did the X-Class. Mercedes but have now, done commercial I'm vehicles like for years. Proper like Sprinter, like something that a builder would use. Because it was always transits and stuff like that. Like yeah. You, even in Germany, there weren't really many Mercedes vans. But they've, you remember the snap on van? So you use those really old Merc vans. Yeah, but they're massive. They're lorries. They're pretty much lorries, mm. aren't they? But like a, a normal commercial van was very, very rare. Um, anyway, yeah, say Alhambra. Mm. <laughs> they did those with the VR6. Didn't they, they did, yeah, yeah. They were still rubbish. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> you, so are you going to read this next one out? Or? I'm going to read this next one out, yeah. yeah okay. Is this about my toilet? We're talking about a toilet story. It's a good toilet story. And, okay. and yes, it is about you. Is it embarrassing? This is but, um, a man called Dan. <laughs> Hello, Dan. Dan the man. It wasn't someone that went in the toilet after me, was Just it? a quick story of a recent visit to Caffeine and Machine. <laughs> I was waiting outside the men's toilets. This was fairly busy when all of a sudden... I hear a lot of moaning and groaning. It, don't look at me. When I'm on the toilet, I don't make a noise. It went on for a good minute or so. Not long after, a guy comes out, followed by Taylor, with a smile on his face. <laughs> I said it sounded like he was having fun and he oh, told... Oh, that was Robin. <laughs> I said it sounded like he was having fun and he told me, it's carnage in there. <laughs> Still not sure what, what, what went on that evening, but he looked very happy about it. <laughs> As a side note, it was great to meet Taylor. Really made my day when I parked up and saw him there. He was so friendly, and I even got a picture with him. Can't oh. wait to see you all at Shedfest. Another one. Dan, what happened it in that nice toilet? It was nice to meet you, Dan. So I was in the cubicle, and Robin was using the urinal, yeah. and he kept making funny sexual noises. <laughs> and we were do. just laughing in there. It was As only us do. two in there. Was it? And, and, and then we came out, and, he, and it was Dan. We just stood there, and we were like... Psh, it's carnage in there. Just don't. Just carnage. Is it all up the walls? Oh, it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. Oh. It must have sounded very funny from the outside thinking about it. Yeah. And we all came, me and Robin came out laughing. It was very funny. Good, good. Well, as long as you're having fun while shitting, mm. that's, that's yeah. the main thing. I wasn't actually shitting. I was, I was pizzing. Oh, were you? Mm. Okay. We've been talking for an hour now and there is nothing left on, on, the, on the script. It's a very loose script. I've got a question for you too. Oh, for crying out loud. And it's a bit of a first world question. And, yeah. And, uh, and I, I, I feel like I need to make a bit of a decision. And I would like your opinions on it. Serious opinions. Because oh, you two about, always give shit opinions. Is this about Robin, the, no, no, the painter this, girl? No, no, this is about my... Because <laughs> he's been a, asking us questions. Oh, no, I've already yeah, made a decision. Yeah, it's like, how, do, how, how does it work? No, no it, funny. Anyway, my 540i... Yes. Right, the yes. one that I did a V2 video on, my lovely Aspen Silver yes. 540i. Yes. Yeah. Sell it. I've recently bought, as I think I mentioned in the last podcast, a Oxford Green 540i manual touring. Oxford Green? Oxford Green 540i manual touring. Well, then you have to sell the other one. With tan leather. You have to sell your old one. 
It is also chassis number one. It's the first if 540 you, I manual you touring don't I've keep made. That, then we yeah, can I know never, you really like that friends. car because you. When I chassis told you about it, one? you got really excited. Yes. Question. Yes. Do I? You sell the first one. Yes. Sell the first one and keep the green one. Do I sell the green one and keep my first one, or do I keep both? No, you don't keep both. That's and then the, the reason for why that I'm I'm. Um, it's not very good car dealer, is it? You're not, no, 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 I like keeping cars. That's is what it is. And, you know, like, everyone's the same. Anyone that's into cars keeps them. Yes. Ones that they like and get attached to. Now, my silver one, yeah, all right, it is, it's not, not chassis number one. It's actually chassis number 33. So is it's still it? quite, oh, that's it's cool. still quite yeah. old. Yeah. Um, it is still a one of one car. Yeah. It's got a very interesting color interior. It's a very interesting spec. And, I've put a lot of time and effort into that car. Yes. I've had it for nearly four years now, and I've done everything on it. You've got to remember, it's got Rich's custom exhaust mm-hmm. on it. It's got BCs on it. I've put a Quaife Limited slip diff in it. I've fully done all of the suspension, everything. Yep. I, and I don't know what to do, because I like the green one, but it's not got the stuff that the silver one's got on yes, it. So, and- so your simple question is, if the green one wasn't chassis number one, would you keep it? Uh, I don't, I'm not that bothered by the chassis number one. I like the color. Green's my favorite color. Yeah. So are, are you admitting then that the reason that you're thinking of selling your other 540 is because it's such a boring plain color? That no, no, it's not no, because I love the color of that they, one. They that's ran the out of color on they, that. They, they, they did, they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. They're I love like the gray, color yeah. of that one because it's, it's purple. It is. It's like a pinky silvery purple. It's very cool. And it's got aubergine interior. It's Do you want my honest opinion? Interior. Yes. Keep the original one, sell the green one. Really? really? Yes. Yep. I would say the 100%. same. Why yeah. is that? Because if you it... sell the original one, you will regret it for the rest of your life. You sell the green one, it's like, oh, cool, I had it. You uncovered it, you discovered it, chassis number one, you've made it more special than anyone thought it was, and you'll make a good little profit on it. You ever sell the the grey one, you'll be you'll be really upset because you have spent so much time. And I know mm. you, you, you for having think, that car. Yeah, we, we when we came to you, that was in a pile of bits in the corner of your unit. Yeah. It didn't have any wheels on, no subframe in it or anything like that. You've learnt welding on it. You've done mm. all this stuff. Like, I, that That is a car with history with you. Yeah. The other one's just... It's a bit like brick, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Like Britain makes no sense to keep. But it's not really worth anything. But he's never going to sell it. But he's no, never going to sell it, yeah, yeah, which is the same with that 540i. But... And think about it. For, for, for us on the sofa and everyone watching and listening, cars to us are more than, uh, you know, a, a factor of parts. Cars have personalities. They are alive. They're living beings for us. Yeah. How do you think that car would feel if you saw the green one and you're like, oh, I like the color. I'm mm. going to get rid of you. Yeah, that car that would be is, so I have upset. About that, yeah. And genuinely, if, if, you, if you sell that car, you will feel so guilty because you, you will think, what's that car thinking? Mm. What have I done wrong? Like yeah. a dog. Like a dog. Yeah, yeah. I do know what you, you mean. You can never sell and it. I, I that, do that get green that. one, I think you can sell with a good conscience. Mm. Yeah, I do completely get that. It's just, so you know, when that? you find a car and how you're like, that? this car. Yes, but, but your, so your job special. is to find cars. I know, but I don't sell the ones that I get really attached to. You but, know that. But that's why you shouldn't get attached to it. Just think of it as. But I can't. I'm a car person. I'm a car lover. But you I'm have your 540i, it. and it's got but the it's got the richest fabrication this, exhaust and I get on that. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I, and I don't want to sell my silver one. This is the thing. I don't. I, but there's no I point having it. both of them. There is no point Are you having. Sure. It. Yes. A hundred percent. Even if I just the keep them one. next to each no, other. No. No. The green no. There is no, 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 no point. The green one needs to go. Really like the green one. I've not even seen it. I prefer your silver one. Do you? Yes. It's got so much more history. It's way more special. And it's, it's and it's got it's the whole Taylor's Goodridge car. story behind yeah, it as well, yeah. which is cool. That yeah, is maniac. True. So how much is the green one? It's it's for sale now. How much that? I have had offers of upwards of ten grand for it. Well, there you go. I'm oh, guessing you didn't pay ten. Speaking of yeah. of estate cars, yeah. I you might be a little bit upset about this, but wait, I've wait, sold wait. a car. Sorry, oh. before we move on, if you sell that for ten grand, mm. imagine the supercharger kit you could then get for your 540i. All right, I'm selling it. <laughs> <laughs> Or ITBs and or the anything. ITBs for the six series. Yes, you could get all of that by selling that green. Imagine one. how many little fellas you could rent out for a night and just completely. Well, that'd be ruined. more interesting cars. They're less hassle. Oh, okay. but, <laughs> yeah, trust me. Um, speaking of cars, yeah. I have sold one from my personal collection yes. this week, this very week. Yeah, and you might be upset about this. I have sold Brian my E30 Touring. Brian, Brian, my Brian. E30 325 i manual Touring. Yeah. The reason I sold it is because I have the 6 Series, mm-hmm. my classic BMW. Yep. I have the 540 for my touring. It didn't really fit in anywhere. I didn't really... 
um, picture myself using that car and I haven't really used it. Also, I haven't for some reason grown massively attached to it. I haven't loved it. I don't know why. I can't put my finger on it. I just didn't. And yeah. thirdly, it owed me a lot of money. Yeah, because you have I spent a I good spent amount. I spent so much money yeah, on yeah, that yeah. car. Because we were obviously planning to do the whole road trip with yeah, both of them. Now, but yeah. to be fair, you ruined it. I think when Taylor got that car, he didn't expect to be waiting four months for your car to get this rush yeah, repair yeah. work done by Yorkshire Car Restoration. Shout out to Yorkshire Car Restoration. They are still working on that car. Yeah, because it, 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 it so needed so much. It is so much. It's going to be fantastic though. But so anyway, I jealous. sold it and it's a little bit of a sad, but also a little bit of a happy story. And the reason it's sad is because I'm probably likely to never see that car again. Why? Is it going for scrap? The reason that it's quite happy is because it is going to Australia. What? I have sold it to a chap called Sean, who's really nice and actually listens to this podcast. He oh. lives in Australia. Hi, Sean. Good eye, Sean. And he has bought my lovely 30. Yeah. And uh, and I'm dropping it off at the docks, docks to him in a couple of weeks' time. And it's going off to Australia. That's amazing. So you bought that for 500 quid. You spent 200 quid time now. Right. It owes you 700 pounds. Right. How much is Sean paying you for it? So No, no, you spent a lot. I'm not going to say because I don't know if Sean wants me to disclose how much he's paid for it, but I did spend a lot on it. I initially yes. paid five and a half grand for it. I spent 1,800 quid on bodywork. I spent God knows how much on the interior and the wheels and everything. I put the IS lip on it. Yep. I bought that extra steering wheel as yep, well. Yep, yep. Um, are the wheels going with it? Yeah, the Alpina okay. wheels that are on it are going with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else did I do to it? I did quite a lot of work to it. Quite a Speaking lot. Speaking of wheels. <gasps> oh, yeah. I'm very excited. Very, very excited. So, you know, on the day that we were going to Monaco. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I was, I was just scrolling through Instagram and um, the Instagram page Retro Plates, which does like original style number plates yeah i love retro look them plates, up retro yeah. plates they are fantastic for your cars um posted up a story saying i've got these immaculate harker wheels for sale who wants them and they do look brand new i and they love look brand harker new. wheels i looked at them and i was like they would look fantastic on roger i need them immediately i sent him a dm straight away and a deal was done mm. and i have bought a stunning set of harker wheels for roger and I cannot wait to go pick them up. They are lovely, lovely wheels. I yes. love Harker wheels. Funny story about Harker wheels. Yeah. I once bought two Harker wheels from a guy that had them. Two sets? Like a, no, just no, just two, two wheels. wheels. Uh, had them in like a pile of wheels. They were three piece, 18 inch Harker wheels. Mm. They are worth a fortune. Yeah. I was very young at the time. I didn't know what they were worth. I bought them for 110 quid. Wow. With the center caps in them, all the bolts, the wow. barrels, every, complete wheels. And I brought them home and I was like, oh my God, these are so cool. I want to put them on the six series. Because this is, like, I must have been 19 at the time because I got the six series. When I was About 20 years ago, yeah. And uh, funny. And um, I brought them home. And I was like, oh, they are beautiful. Like they are such lovely wheels. And uh, I posted a picture of them on my Facebook and this guy messaged me and he was like, I will come tomorrow and I will give you 600 quid for both of those wheels. Wow. And I was like, yeah, all right then. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, I was, I'm in I was like, yeah, yeah, go on then. I'll do, I'll do that. Because at the time, that was a lot of money. Like, yeah, I was yeah, like, oh yeah, my yeah, God, yeah. like a, a 400 odd quid profit in a day. Yeah, yeah I love amazing. that. And uh, he came, he was really keen. He was like, I want to come tonight. It was quite late at night. Wow. Like, I, I want them tonight. And it, I was like, he's really keen to buy these wheels. God knows why. Uh, he bought them and I saw them up for sale the very next day for three grand. <gasps> no. For two. Oh my God. Because they are worth a fortune, those wheels. Oh. Because they were like a really rare offset size, blah, blah, blah. And they were all original as well. That's and they had amazing. original box. Yeah, and I That's was like, amazing. I've really <laughs> up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but my God, God, have you made up for lost time? Because mm. you are, you do screw people over. Uh, I don't. Every day. No, no every. it's only friends, sorry, that you screw over. I do cars. do people a lot of deals, though. You do. That's a lot fair, of good deals. You, yeah. do, yeah. you do a good deal. You do a good deal. All right. So I've got one last topic of the podcast yeah. and then this will be it. So we've got Graham Dodds has emailed in and I'm quite interested to know what, what your, your opinion of this is, Alex. Uh, oh, God. And, um, You're about to slip in the clutch. No, so he's, he's asked, what is your opinion on kit cars? And if you had to get one, is there anyone that you've seen that you would like? Oh. Kit cars. I've got an opinion on this. Um, kit um, <sighs> oh, mm. Are we talking like caterums? No, it can be like. Uh, so, have you ever seen like the GT? Well, because that replicas, I think, come under this as well. So, like 
a GT40 replica uh, or something like that. Okay. Like, is, they, that, is that a kit car though? A kit car to me yeah, is something they're, no, that's... They're, they're built usually in kits. They're, they're so usually... Like, like the like Mark II MR2, or sorry, the Mark... Yeah, Mark II MR2 being turned into... P no, because they're different. So a lot of the GT40 and like the Cobra and stuff like they that... They have their own chassis. They're their own chassis. Okay. They're literally... But you're kit... talking replicas. Uh, I'm talking kit cars that could be like other cars, not not an he's, MR2 that's been put He's a body talking kit on. a replica that you buy it and it comes as a chassis and all the panels and you bolt it together. Not something where you have to take an MR2, cut the roof off or whatever, uh, okay. And, yeah, yeah. Okay. and glue a load of fiberglass okay. on. So like a big Meccano set. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, you, you know, we're talking like a Caterham does fall under it because you can buy that as a kit car yeah. or uh, a GT40 or an AC Cobra and things like that. Yeah. Um, Something like that does actually quite excite me to have something going on in the background that I can go to on a weekend, crack on a little bit, make a little bit of progress and just always have a project in the back of my mind that I know I need to crack on. Yeah, with. yeah. And then being able to turn the key for the first time and know I built that, I put that together. That is genuinely really exciting. They do. Is it the EXO set? Oh, for, for the, MX5. For MX5. Yeah, yeah. I think something like that would be great. Because yeah, MX5 uh, is an exoset. Let me let me find it. It makes uh, MX5 look like an aerial atom sort of thing. Oh, that's quite cool. Yeah, so you, you use... Because obviously the MX5 has its um, uh, uh, central chassis plane. Mm. And, then it, and then so you have a rolling chassis from an MX5 that you can then use. That's quite cool. Yeah. So exoset is basically an MX5 completely stripped... And yeah, it looks very aerialish down the yeah, sides. Yeah, that's cool. And you've got to think an MX-5 weighs a thousand kilos. This has got to be six hundred, five, six hundred, something like that. Not a lot. <clears throat> Not a lot. So something like that does. Yeah, it does excite me. Um, currently, there is no time to do anything like that. But no. one day, when I've got a bit more time, I would, I would definitely think about doing something like that. So I actually used to specialise in a lot of kit cars. I used to work at a place called Thunder Road Cars. And we used to specialize in American classics and AC Cobra replicas and GT40 replicas and stuff like that. I love them. Yeah. I think they're amazing Doesn't bits of kit. Adam C have an AC Adam's, Cobra replica? Uh, Adam C's got one, yeah. yeah. The thing is, a lot of people, when they go to shows, they go, oh, it's a replica, and, uh, and they turn their nose up at it. Yeah. But all they don't realize is that they're actually still really good cars. Mm. Like, uh, imagine owning a GT40 replica. It's a, a, a fraction of the price of a, an original one. That, but that's the thing with, with these like these ones that we're talking about in particular. We're not talking, like, because an MR2 one, at the end of the day, it still is an MR2 with an MR2 yeah, engine. Yeah, that's it's a thing. body kit. It's, it's, it? it's, yeah. it's a body a kit. Rubbish, but yeah. these GT40 and the Cobra especially, yeah, yeah. they take a, an American V8 usually yeah. and then stick them in there. They are a V8 powered yeah. little sports car. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some of them are a bit rubbish because I've seen AC Cobra replicas with the engine out of a, a Pontiac Fiero in it oh, or God, an Essex yeah. V. Six yeah, or whatever yeah. oh, and they're a bit shit but you get a lot of them and i mean i've seen some of them and haven't believed that they're replicas really they're, yeah, they're, yeah. i mean we once had a jag d type come in and it was a full aluminium bodied replica with the proper jag d type straight wow. six in it wow. all polished it was it was like you get in it, it had the original jag dials in it and you're like this is the real deal and you and it's not yeah yeah and and uh, we had some ac cobras come in and they've got the correct ford v8 in them i had one come in once it was a homologation special and it had a custom chassis on it um but it was too like as close to as you can get to the original chassis it was proper period correct yeah it had the period correct avon tires on it it was um a full aluminium body but it wasn't painted it was oh, polished aluminium it looked chrome that's cool and you know you take it out in the rain or whatever you've got to polish it it's a bit hard work but it looked incredible yeah. it was fantastic and some of them i just i love the idea of owning a gt40 replica uh, they, okay I, so that because, is the one i was just, i was because, gonna finish it off that is what i want a gt40 yeah, yeah, because one really? imagine yeah. imagine you've paid a fraction of the price but you've got something that still drives realistically probably and they like still the they're still mid-engined with a v8 in yeah. them. all of them are yeah, yeah, yeah you've got a throttle body or carved v8 sat yeah. behind you it looks i mean imagine seeing that go down the road you'd be like oh <gasps> Oh my god, imagine seeing a GT40, even if it is a replica coming the other way. With a diesel engine. Blah, 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 blah. But also at the same time, it's not so valuable that you're scared to drive it. Exactly. exactly. And it's not so valuable that you're scared to do a couple of little mod cons to mm -hmm. it, like yep. putting a bit of Bluetooth in it or, you know, yep. having a couple of creature comforts. Because realistically, if you just want to take a car like that, 
to Le Mans Classic or something, you're going to want a couple of nice little bits in it. Yeah, exactly. You're not going to want seated heat. Yeah, and I just I think a great idea. Yeah, really. If there was a idea. replica company that did um, the Porsche GT, then that would be for me. So, um, so there's a company called AK Sports Cars. I think you. Yes, uh, they're you, quite popular. You, yeah. you see them at Goodwood. Everything. Yeah, yeah. It's so they, got my name on it. They do. Mm -hmm. a, was it AK what? AK Sport Cars. Oh, okay. Sports yeah. Cars. Hello, AK. Um, and they do a GT40. Oh. Um, you can either get the factory built car for 110 thousand, but it is like you know you look that's, at it. That's what engine is it? Like that's not bad. 110 grand gets you something that looks exactly car. like a GT40. Mm. Yeah. Or. You can get the self-build kit, and I think this is where the deal is crazy, for around 65 to 70K. That's really Including good. engine? Yes. What engine is it? Uh, is, well, it says dependent on spec, so obviously you can spec up probably a better engine. A one litre eco boost. The, <laughs> <laughs> they usually, I, can't, I don't know which engine, I know it is an American one that they usually yeah, use. Yeah, it'll use be a, an LS or something. It, I think I it is thought, an LS. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they have like ITBs on them and everything mm. as well. Like it, it is, And you're getting all of that for... 65, 70K building yeah. it yourself. I, I think it's amazing. I think they're awesome. I love so, a kit car. Question. Do we get one? Do we build a car? Everything will be on upside down, but sure. I mean, we did a good job on Big Pete with a facelift. So how bad can it be? I mean, we did half a job or quarter of a job, you know, third of it. I'll you know you what? If, if anyone works for, man. for AK Sports Cars and wants to get in touch. Can we have a deal? Let's do uh, a deal. I think that if we could do some sort of building a kit car in a week, in a shot in a week. Yeah. Yes. But I would like. In a I, week. I would like to keep it at the end, please. I'd like a GT40. Thank you very much. <laughs> Can we get an M57 in it? <laughs> like even the chassis looks like imagine, really well built and everything, and, and it's got the two twin X. Imagine building the, oh, right. Picture this. Wow. Imagine building a Ford GT40 replica with. I'm going to say a V8 in it. It's got to have a V8 in it. Yeah. yeah. Lifted on mud tires with mud flaps. You're a maniac. A GT40 rally oh, car. There we go. You're a maniac. <laughs> there we go. I, I found the, I found the, the actual. So oh, look. wow. Oh, How wow. cool is that? Oh, oh, my God. How beautiful is that? that look at is that. That is lovely. I like that. For anyone listening with your ears, it's a GT40 replica in like a it's, really nice mint green. Yeah. With a V8 in the back that looks straight piped with open throttle bodies oh. on it and it's all polished and oh it looks fantastic that does look the bollocks i would be so up for that mm. all it needs is a tow bar and the <laughs> job done <laughs> lord yeah ak sports cars get in contact oh oh wait engine, oh, engine. so it's a small block ford 302 stroked to 2347 oh, okay, cubic nice. inches 5.5 litre, oh. eight, eight stack throttle body fuel injector controlled by drive-by wire. God, so it literally, it gives you everything. Yeah, so that that is an old engine that's been brought up to modern days. It's got fuel injection. It'll have, you know, a proper oh, standalone wait, so that, so that's, that's one spec. Or you can go with Does it the... Does say the price? Uh, mm, well, it says 65 to 70 for okay, depending okay. on them. So then the other specification... Is a Gen Free Ford Coyote five hundred Coyote, yeah. Coyote oh, five hundred so, horsepower. So that would, I believe, be the engine out of a Fox Body Mustang. I believe is that a Coyote engine. Oh, mm, I think so. I'm not sure. God, look at that chassis, like yeah, it's space frame chassis, isn't it? It's good, isn't it? That is good. What else is it? Just the GT40s that they do? Uh, no, so they do Cobras as well. Oh, I'm not interested in the Cobra. Cobras are great. It's I like special a Cobra. If you're going to do it, at, go big. Look at the seats. Yeah, them. but Cobras are special. You get a, you get one with side pipes GT40 on it. GT40 or Cobra, come on, man. Alex, look where the gear stick is as well. Oh, it's by your right knee. And that actually is where it is on a GT40. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. That's I tell you cool. what, why don't I get a GT40 and one of you two get a Cobra and we'll have a drag well, race. I'm getting the GT40. All right, I'll have a Cobra. Fine. If you'd like to see that, then please donate at the link below. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it, genuinely, if we can get in contact with them, maybe we can we'll do it. some sort of deal. And that might be a very good series. Yeah. You never know. We built a car and we gave up our, after three hours. Can, <laughs> can, can three morons... This even comes with air conditioning and everything. Can three morons build a kit car in 24 hours? Or kit car versus ADHD. <laughs> God, ADHD would win. It would win. It would win. Right, we've been rabbiting on now for one hour, 20 minutes and 52 seconds. Should we go and buy an X5? We are going to go up to Bradford. It's 12.46. We're going to go up to Bradford and we're going to have a look at this probably ex-police car, probably written off um, X5. And I'm going to try and get it for a 10 and a half grand. Even so if it's shit? We won't have a video otherwise. So no, we need to. a video. We're buying this car. <laughs> uh, so in next week's podcast, uh, reminder... I will announce those 12 winners who will have their cars featured on the official 
Shedfest 2024 artwork. So that's posters, uh, signed posters, that's uh, T-shirt designs, everything. So please uh, email in your uh, order number. And sorry, I need to uh, order number and then email events at autoalexcars.com dot com dot com with the picture of your car and why you want your car to be on the official 2024 Shedfest artwork. Um very exciting. And also next week I'll announce if I bought that X5, mm. X police car. Well you're buying it. We need to buy it for yeah. a video. Okay, brilliant. Okay. <laughs> uh, and Chris is also gonna have the F eleven. Is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's keen. Yeah, he's okay, keen. Okay, nice. Yeah, so that's nice. Anyway, we're going to call it there. Thank you very much for listening to episode 20 of the Autoalix podcast. Um, we love doing it. We love having special guests on. And when Taylor can be bothered to be here, we How love having you, you on as when well. When I'm invited, you mean. Uh, when I'm invited. And we love bringing you great entertainment and making you all happy. We, we do indeed, yeah. So thank you very much for writing in. If you want to write in, you can do so at podcast at autoalexcars.com. Oh, you're good. You're mm. good, aren't you? Uh, any more to say? I think that's us done for the week, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah. That's you done for the week, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going home, right? I'll see you later. Yeah. Um, uh, later this week, we are also going to Scotland in our most unreliable cars. Yes. Uh, we so are. we will be doing the podcast in Scotland. In Scotland, in Bonnie, Scotland. Aye, in front Scotland. of the Kangles, probably uh, sideways going down a mountain. With probably only one car actually making it. Yes, Ooh. yes, yes, yes. Anyway, that's us for now. We will see you uh, in your eye holes and your ear holes. Next week, until then, whatever you're doing, do it to the best of your ability. We will see you then. Goodbye! Bye! Bye.